Okay, there's one more important thing that I forgot to cover in regards to this date, this high watch date. Um, <laughs> the 223 just kills me. <laughs> um, and also 1223, because I was also showing the, those numbers. Um, on this day, on the Jewish calendar, it is the 33rd day of the Omar count. We know what the 33 represents, and I had no idea until I did some more research. I knew about that day in regards to the Jews celebrating it as a public holiday because of it having to do with a rabbi who died, and then some of his followers died, but there's, there's a little bit more to it, so let me show you that. So, as you see here, May 12th, 2020, it's um, the 18th of ER, but it's of the Omar count, it's the 33rd day of the Omar count. And I had no idea until yesterday, when I did a little more research about this, that one of the things they do on this holiday is they light bonfires. Well, for those of you who watched the two videos that I posted in my community page regarding May Day. Um, the whole month of May basically is uh, high occult days. Um, there's uh, Beltane, there's Walpurgis, and all of them light bonfires. Um, it's kind of synonymous with sacrifice. So, I was... Uh, amazed when I saw that it just so happens to be on this day. And for those who are interested, uh, you might want to check out this website. Um, here it is up here. Uh, if I remember, I will leave the link. Um, sometimes I forget. But it just uh, gives a little more insight into um, the month of Ziv and the um, meanings of it representing light and radiance and the light and the radiance you know hopefully is in connection to us receiving our glorified bodies our um, permanent uh, dwelling instead of our tabernacle our temporary dwelling um, it's got some some nice things that they they say about it on this on the site uh, and it also could be um, pointing to the comet that will be flying over. And it won't just be flying over the United States, but it will be making its way across the Atlantic after the 20th and going over to Europe, and I presume going all the way across the rest of the globe. Um, so, you know, who knows? Maybe it's a, a, a clue a hint that we need to be watching for something in the heavens um, that will be lit up. So I would like to show you some connections on Torah calendar with the parashal readings and things that I've been showing on the calendar in regards to second Passover. But before I do that, I don't want to forget um, because I had mentioned Comet Haley being uh, connected to Noah's Flood. Um, this website here is johnsnewplace.wordpress.com and uh, let me just go over some of this stuff quickly. It was uh, published on April 5th and at that time um, in this article they're talking a lot about Comet Atlas because at that time it was being um, you know it was five times bigger than Jupiter and brightening and supposed to be this spectacular spectacular comet that we would all see and then it broke apart just a couple days ago so um, they talk a lot about Comet Atlas but there's also reference to other um, comet stuff so historically comets have been harbingers harbingers of disaster linked to pandemics and now one approaches Earth. so they're speaking of Comet Atlas at this point and um, linked to pandemics and death on a mass scale, and now one approaches Earth. So, 
I'm I'm wondering if Comet Swan is actually part of Comet Atlas, like a part of it that broke off and went off on its own and became like a baby comet. Because apparently that does happen because um, they refer to in this article that it could have been a parent comet of Comet Haley that was present at the time of the flood. So there's lots of paintings, a lot of them from medieval, um, the medieval period with comets in them. Um, it says, for much of history, comets have been associated with death and disease. And uh, there are increasing evidence that some life on Earth originated in comets and other stellar debris. I don't know. I don't know about that. Uh, you know, Alba could have done it that way, but who knows. If passing com comets have continued to deposit viruses and microorganisms on this planet, this may explain why ancient astronomers and civilizations attributed the periodic outbreak of plague of these stellar objects, or to these stellar objects. Uh, moreover, the subsequent evolution and extinction of life may have been directly impacted by the continued arrival of bacteria, RK, viruses, and their genes from space. Now, this is interesting because what if the, the thing that we're all dealing with right now was created and they know that this is coming? that a comet is going to come and create something much worse and so they're preparing us for that um but of course they won't tell us that the comet did it they'll say it's because we weren't doing what we were told to do do you see how everything's connecting here this is why i'm covering it um coincident with outbreaks of pandemics. Let's go down to the Noah's flood part. You know what? I have to correct myself. I think they're saying that Comet Atlas was the one that was around during the flood. Let's read this. The brightest comet to light up our skies in over 20 years. Great interest though. Possibly only speculation. Is this excerpt from the website Answers in Genesis which reported upon the time period of the Great Bl Biblical Flood, and coincidentally, the time period aligns almost eerily with the last time Atlas or its parent body. It is Atlas. Okay, it's not Haley. My bad. Um, Haley was um had come around, of course, uh, periodically when when uh, they discovered it. They figured that it had come around uh, more than it wasn't a new comet. In other words. Okay, so it was Atlas that they're saying. Interesting. Well, that makes me think that Swan is, is, is a baby of Atlas even more. So anyway, it's saying, um, using the Bible, well-documented historical events and some math, we find that the Great Flood began approximately 4,359 years ago in the year 1656 AM or 2348 BC. Just a coincidence that the Great Biblical Flood began approximately 4,359 years ago, while scientists believe the last time Comet Atlas or its parent was around was about 44,000, uh, sorry, 4,400 years ago. According to Sir Isaac Newton, the comet was the cause of Noah's flood. And I was like, oh, no, that's not true. But then he explains that God sent the comet to cause the flood, which makes perfect sense because when he does judgments, he does it using, you know, hail, volcanoes, fire. He uses these things. Um, he says, believe that he had found the answer for the biblical flood in a comet. And here's where it talked about Haley. Okay. So the comet Haley would come by um, every now, I read somewhere else that it was every 76 years that it would uh, swing by. But he says that the father sent the comet to cause the flood. 
In other words, the force of the comet would open up the heavens, open up the earth. It would uh, do that. And the video link that I left for um, the astronomer that I mentioned, uh, he said there's been a lot of flooding in Croatia as comets are going over. So um, he said that the vapors tail the comet saturated the upper atmosphere with excess water, which led to a cataclysmic rainfall. Uh, the windows of heaven being opened and the weight of the rainfall combined with tidal forces caused water beneath the surface of earth to flow forth and wreak havoc. And that, you know, that sounds um, plausible to me. So uh, check out this, just check out this website. It's very interesting. And um, there's lots of information about different car comets being harbingers of doom. So, uh, you know, in a way, the comets can be associated with the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse because um, they even said that comets have um, made men seek war. So, you know, pestilence and war and famine and all these things that the horsemen bring when they when the seals are broken and they ride are things that comets do. Um, and Wormwood, which is an entity, as we know, is most likely a comet because it's referred to as a torch burning as a lamp, which is what comets do. So, you know, uh, comets are probably angels in physical form. That's That's my humble opinion. So let me show you what Torah calendar in the uh, parasha meanings. Uh, okay, so beginning tomorrow, or actually it's probably midnight now, it's almost midnight. Uh, this parasha reading, which I read in the synagogue, and this one, the following Saturday, are um, preparing us for something. Uh, this is uh, be strong, be strong, and maybe we be strengthened. They're heading into the wilderness. So that's what they would read in synagogue on May 2nd. And then this one is about being in the wilderness. So it's he's preparing his people for something that's going to be tough because they, we know that once they entered into the wilderness that uh, things became a little tougher for them. They didn't have the food that they enjoyed in Egypt. They didn't have water. Um, they were on foot and uh, they didn't have, they had to erect tents to sleep in. Whereas before they most likely lived in um, houses built with clay and stone, you know, bricks because that's what they were making for the Egyptians. So I'm sure um, they most likely lived in them as well. So anyway, it's interesting that this month where it, it appears that some trying times are coming, that this is what the parashal readings are. And here's the interesting one on ER 22. <laughs> the 22. And... I was like, okay, nah, so, and I had no idea. It is a form of a word in the Strong's that I covered several videos back. And look what it means. To take. And I was like, okay, take. Well, when you look it up in, let's see, it's in Numbers 421. Let me show you. Uh, actually, it's in verse 22. <laughs> It's the word Nasa to lift, carry, take. Remember several videos back, you guys? It just cannot be coincidence that he does this. Because I don't know these things until I do a video on them. I covered this exact word in, in the previous videos not too long ago. To lift, to carry, to take. This is all about um, arising. What it, it, Carrying away, taking, so, yeah. All right, so this is the end of part four. I will see you guys in the next one. I just have a little bit more to cover. I love you. Shalom.